Hi folks, it seems like folks always want to see more fourth axis content. This should be a great video. We needed 24 of these clamps that would hold on to 5 8 inch round bar on our new Okuma horizontal to make our reversible inserts. And the benefit of using the fourth axis here is both a one and done approach as we're making this batch now and down the road if I, we need to make more super easy. I don't have to go find some complicated setup or soft jaws or fixtures, etc. So let's dive in. It's really important, at least on a Tormach, that your coordinate system is on the center of your Y and Z plane. So the green and the blue have to be in the center of your stock or rotation. We've got our micro arc mounted on the right side of our machine. So the X needs to point to the right. And I'll tell you, this has been a great setup for us. Having the 1100 MX with the tool changer and the micro arc makes it for a really powerful tool for kind of one-off jobs and short runs like this. We tend to leave our micro arc on, but the beauty of having one of the 1100 fixture plates and our micro arc plate is it's really easy to take it on and off. The micro arc subplate automatically aligns it and you can even use our colored plugs to remember exactly where you like to have it. The MicroArc is probably one of the best made products and one of my favorites from Tormach. It really is all you would want out of a fourth axis. It's lightweight, it's relatively small, it's quick, it's accurate, it's just really nice to use. We like having the smaller collet chuck on the end because its nose and the radius around the work holding area is just a little bit smaller than a typical three or four jaw chuck. That lets us get a little bit closer, but as you can see, the one downside is like any sort of a multi-axis functionality, you still have to either have a longer stick out on your tool or you have to work on your material further out. And the way we're dealing with the fact that we're sticking out over three inches from the chuck at 0.75, so we're actually right at about that four times stick out. More than that is when you've got to start being careful. But what we're doing is we're breaking this into sections. We're using an adaptive with a machining boundary sketch to first machine the half of the part furthest away from the chuck. That way we're not creating a weaker thin walled section back here while we still have to do work out here. We've got two different adaptives. We can use the fusion tool orientation to automatically rotate our part around, giving us the ability to cut some from the bottom of the clamp and then rotate over to the top of the clamp. A 2D contour to finish up some of the actual clamp geometry. And then a surfacing or scalloping tool path to cut in this radius. Moving on to the middle section, using a half inch tool to quote unquote face the top. It's not what you'd think of as a typical facing operation, but smaller diameter tools have less tool pressure. So it's gonna be easier to get a good cut here than using a larger face mill or super fly. We're also going in an unconventional way using the pass direction offset of 90 degrees. That is always relative to your X axis, by the way. A normal tool path would be this direction, but we run the risk by going left and right of cutting into our chucker work, work holding on the right side, hence the 90 degree angle. Next up, we drill our through hole, face the other side. Bore the two pockets out and finish up the sides. Back half really more of the same. The adapts are followed by 2D contours and a scalloping toolpath. The one additional toolpath is we're starting to pre-slot our part. We wanna get enough access to the material while it's still rigidly held so that we can do some in-machine chamfers and engraving before we then come back and slot it off. And finally, this is not necessary for these clamps to work, but I kinda of like what Vince and Patrick did on this, which is giving us some textured finish on the inside of these clamps. Throwing our logo on there just to look nice. And then what's absolutely awesome, truly a one and done in machine chamfer D-bird. So these parts can come off and go right over to the horizontal, which I love. 
Believe it or not, there was more rigidity than I expected. I actually didn't even run these parts. Vince helped program them, and one of our new interns, Patrick, ran them, which is really a, a great experience all around. Folks, if you want to learn machining, you have to make parts. But the chamfer tool cut well, and it did not chatter as I thought it might. And last but certainly not least, tabbing the part off. We have a whole video. It's called fifth axis strategies, but really much of the same applies for four axis strategy on ways to tab off parts. And by the way, if you want to learn more on Fusion 360, we've got a couple of different options for you. We have an online class that's self-paced that you can take over at nyccnc.teachable.com. We are reopening our hands-on classes here in Zanesville, Ohio. We hosted these for years. We had hundreds of students come to Zanesville for the chance to spend three days running a Tormach or a Haas machine. Classes were great. We had had to shut them down with the pandemic, but I am proud to say they are back. We have openings starting this fall in 2022. So if you want to come here and spend time learning Fusion, running machines, by all means, check out the link in the course dates. And last but certainly not least, we've got a ton of resources over on NYC CNC, including if you hover over Fusion 360 specific sets of videos on fourth axis cam and toolpaths. A couple of other housekeeping notes that really help us, especially when we're either working as a team or might come back to this part days or weeks later to rerun it. We've got our NC programs already set up now. I love the Fusion improvement where when you hover over say the front half NC program, it shows you by shading the cam toolpaths that are selected. This makes it really easy for us to remember how to post the different files if we wanna run them separately. And it remembers that things like our post processor, those settings, especially on a fourth axis with how it's oriented really do matter. And the folders really make it easy to remember what you're doing. In this case, front, middle, and the back half, and then some of the more generic remaining sections of the part with a final tab off folder and not uncommon to see us leave an optional stop and see we'll do that and if we're in the middle of something we want to say you know i want to pause before it switches over to that logo we can just drag it right up there of course you can go create one from scratch by going to setup manual and see but when we start from templates or have other files i'll a lot of times leave one in here or i'll do another one where i'll say left off and if i'm trying to prove out a program one operation at a time at the machine or sometimes if i'm just going through and auditing my own cam i'll leave that as a marker because inevitably you get pulled away or distracted or, or take a break and it reminds you as a bookmark where you were see you soon